there, Blazer fans. Welcome to this week's edition of Blazer Insider. This is Mark Ingram, Director of Athletics, coming to you live. And we are really pleased to have three great guests again this week. We've got our head strength and conditioning coach, Stacy Torman. We've got uh, director of our annual fund at Blazer Boosters, Mr. Jay Anderson, and our associate AD for media relations, Ted Feely. Good to see everybody. Thanks morning. Thanks for being with morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's great seeing you virtually again, and we finally uh, returned to work, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But I want to start uh, by asking uh, first you, Stacy. I know you and your staff have been incredibly busy working with our teams, our student athletes, trying your best to keep them fit. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys have been doing to keep our teams ready? Yeah, so we've been um, zooming like crazy. Um, you know, obviously we were we've been off for about four months um, total now. So the the two months once they um, ended all the conference tournaments and all that kind of stuff, we gave them some time, you know, just to absorb what was going on. So we didn't, you know, bombard them with workouts right from the get go. So especially those spring sports, just, you know, that's going to be a while before they get back to it. So um, basically just a um, couple of days a week meeting with them uh, virtually uh, going over workouts or doing the workouts with them or showing them the exercises, making sure they are clear on what we're doing. So um, just trying to stay in contact with them as much as possible and being available for them to check in, make sure they have, if they have questions, we have answers for them. Yeah, well, and I know you guys have done a great job. I know I've heard from from other strength coaches and other coaches just as they start to come back uh, that they're in much better shape than you might expect. So right, we yeah. know everybody appreciates that. Yeah. Now, yeah. Ted, um, you and your staff have been busy as well. You've been creating a lot of content and trying to keep stories active for all of our fans. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys have been doing? Sure. I think this time period – has really challenged my staff to be creative with how we are doing content. Obviously, it, we're, our content is driven around the student athletes being here and competing. So we've had to find other ways to populate our website and populate social media without our student athletes competing. So it's really challenged us to be creative. A couple of things that we did um, right when it started was a virtual egg hunt on uh, social media right around Easter. Um, one of the things I've really liked that we've done was empowering our student athletes and kind of doing a UAB Players Tribune and letting them tell their experiences of, of how they've handled, you know, not only coronavirus, but also the social injustice that's happening now. So it's it's been a good challenge for for my staff to, to stay creative and keep everything populated. Um, and obviously, as we return uh, it'll be a little easier with student athletes back on campus, but it's been it's been a good a good exercise for for me personally, for our staff, and to also uh, allow our student athletes to have a voice. Yeah, that's that's terrific. And and Jay Anderson, the man who never stops, uh, Jay, talk a little bit about. No what. Uh, yeah, I know you've been hard at work trying to keep our fans engaged and reminding them and encouraging them that football's coming and you want to be ready. And talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. We, uh, we took our, the initiative early to just stay in contact with our donors and our fans just to check in, see how they were doing, see how they were feeling, making sure they were safe, letting them know that, you know, yes, we do work with you uh, annually to, to help support UAB athletics, but letting them know that we see them uh, as an important piece and we want them to be healthy and safe with everything that's going on. So that was our initial uh, desire. And then from there, it was just constantly using the information that Ted and his team were putting out there to to really keep our fans informed as to what was happening as uh, as things were moving you know being sensitive to the situation moving deadlines where need be and just really working with our fans to make sure that as we prepare for the fall that they are ready to go uh, with their seats and everything uh, and just continuing to drive the support for UAB athletics but doing it in a way where we're honoring what's going on in the world and just making sure that our fans uh, know that we care about them too, so. Yeah, no, I, I know you guys have been hard at it and, and really given the circumstances, I think we've had great success to be honest with you and, and to, to all of our other fans that are out there, if you haven't renewed your season tickets, now's the time to do it. Absolutely. Uh, because we, we plan on playing on time as scheduled, so. Uh, our team started returning this week, uh, football, men's and women's basketball, and a few of our other student athletes. And Stacy, if you could share with everybody 
you know, what the first couple of weeks here have looked like, really the first week uh, with our student athletes coming back. Right. Um, well, in our weight room, in the Bell weight room, we haven't had any athletes yet, but I know with uh, Lyle in the football strength conditioning facility and um, over in Bartow, I know they've um, done a massive cleaning and making sure everything's, you know, set up so that everybody can socially distance or physically distance, I guess, um, safely. Um, and then the flow of the room, what we've done in Bell is in preparation for when the Olympic sports come back is um, make sure we have a consistent flow in and out of the room. We've got marks down on the floor of where to stand while you're waiting to come in. We've got a check-in table so we can bring them in one at a time, get their temperature, get the armband on them with the color so we know that they've gotten their temperature taken that day and then move them through to the to their station and we've moved a lot of equipment around so that so that they can while they're working out they can stay in one place and just you know we'll bring all the equipment to them then we just spray it all down when they're finished and then they head out the back door and they're good to go and hopefully everybody's safe and sound. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. And I was in there yesterday and uh, noticed that you had moved all the equipment around to try to space mm -hmm. everybody out, which, which yeah. I think is really important and trying to mm -hmm. eliminate some of those common areas. And right now I know the nutrition station is, is offline, but yeah. uh, uh, those are all things that we're doing to try to help keep everybody yeah. safe, as you indicated. Mm -hmm. Ted, uh, talk about how your, your life has changed a little bit. I know that our media requests have ramped up, you know, talk a little bit about that. Well, during, during the coronavirus, I've watched a lot of classic college football games, which has gotten me excited for the return to college football. Um, this time of year is always busy for me because um, it's, you know, trying to finalize the football roster, which with 110 people, newcomers, all, all the ins and outs that go into that. And we're getting ready for uh, conference USA media days, which will be virtual this year. And so I'm trying to finish the media guide and um, all the information that goes into that. But things really haven't changed much for me in terms of what I can do from a football perspective of getting ready for the season. I think now having the student athletes back has given people a lot of um, excitement just to see that, you know, when you see them on campus, it, it makes you believe that the season is going to happen. We've been saying the whole time that we're prepared for it to happen. And so I've been getting ready for it to happen, but to see the student athletes here actually gives people hope. And, um, you hear people talking, things have changed so much, you know, from one week to another on, on what's happening. And, um, you know, in the beginning of coronavirus, you heard that football season might not happen on radio and on, on the media, but things change so quickly. So I think we're to a point now where showing that the student athletes are here, they're practicing, they're, they're getting ready for the season really gives everyone hope that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. And um, it's nice to have some activity around our buildings again. And, and see the guys back. We have more than 90 uh, taking summer classes, which is important. And, um, you know, just as they pr make progress towards their degree. So I know that we haven't made any definitive decisions on this, but what are some of the things that with the media uh, that you've talked about when it gets, when we're talking about the season now, we're talking about upcoming planning. What are some of the things that you've looked at that we may, that we may need to do? Well, um, one would be, I've, got, I've been getting a lot of questions on how and if we will report numbers of coronavirus cases. That's something that we're just taking day by day. Um, that's a question that all of the communication staffs across the country are dealing with. Um, and that's an ever evolving situation. Hopefully it's not something that we have to deal with often. Um, so there's that. There's also trying to figure out allowing media into our into our football facility you know if we have a, a process in place to to have our student athletes check in and make sure that they're coronavirus free but what do we do with outside sources how do we make sure that if we let someone into our building that that they're you know not going to infect our student athletes so those talks are are happening um you know media traveling how that's going to look like in football games what the press box is going to look like there's just a lot of minor details that go into our job that we're trying to figure out right now. And I guess we're not going to know what that really looks like until the season starts, but we have to plan for um, a new normal as a lot of people have heard that term a lot. Um, and it applies to us too. And, and, you know, I, I deal with the outside world and, and not just our student athletes, but, you know, having, 
media get in contact with our student athletes. So what that's going to look like in person, we're not quite sure yet, but we're working through that. Right, right. And, you know, Jay, what about for the development staff? You know, we've got Blazer Village and tailgating and, and uh, of course, social distancing in the stands and how that impacts you and how are you guys preparing? And again, I know we haven't made any definitive decisions, but just generally, what are some of the things that we're talking about? Well, it's, it's definitely an ongoing process, as you said, and, and you know, the conversations that we're having um, in-house are, are really around, you know, how, how do we handle when we successfully renew all of our football season ticket holders? How do we get them all in the stadium? And you know, where, where are we going to be able to seat everybody to make sure that they're comfortable, they're having the great experience that they always have when they come to our games? And, and still be safe. And so it's an ongoing process. We're hard at work with various uh, meetings and, and connection points, um, just following through with different ideas. Uh, we've connected with different schools, not only in our league, but across the country, just to see how they're handling these situations. And, you know, it is a fluid situation for every uh, football program across the country on how to do this. And so we're all working together to figure out what's best for us um, and so, you know, just how we do that um, is a delicate situation. We definitely want to make sure that our fans are still getting that great experience that they get and get a chance to see uh, our football program compete as uh, they've been so strong uh, the past couple of years. And so we're just working hard to make sure our fans have that experience. You know, we don't know what it's, what it's going to look like just yet. We're still in the process, as you said, of making those decisions. Um, but it's definitely top of mind uh, for us. And so as we renew our season ticket holders, uh, we let them know that we have our, our ticket assurance program in place and that, you know, we're definitely um, cognizant of what potentially can happen as we move forward. But, you know, we're looking forward to having great experiences and seeing them in the fall uh, at Legion Field. Yeah, no doubt. You know, we've got 18 starters coming back in football. So for our fans, you're right, uh, we can have another exciting year and expect to have another exciting year on the football field for sure. And and we've won 18 in a row. Nations and we've won 18 in a row. That's right. That's right. Oh. Fourth long exact home winning streak. have to get my, my stat in there. That's right. <laughs> right. We've got the 18-game uh, home winning streak that we have to defend, so we need our fans' help in doing that for sure. So, Stacey, uh, I know we talked a little bit about spacing out in the weight room. What are some other things that we're doing with our student athletes in terms of group size or wearing masks mm -hmm. or any of those things that you could share? Yeah, I think at the beginning, we've kind of put it into three phases. Phase one will be where we've got our, our 12 racks that we can utilize. We're trying to keep it to 10 if we can, um, with 12 being our limit at the beginning. And then once um, July hits, or July 15th probably it will be our phase two where we'll bring some of the weights back in and that kind of thing and let people use a little bit more space, maybe go up to 20 people or 25. So um, masks, we're, we're still kind of going back and forth on the masks. A lot of people say not to wear them. I think lifting wise, it wouldn't matter really if you were wearing them or not um, as far as, you know, physically um, how that would affect your workout or anything. But uh, the coaches will all be wearing them for sure, though. Yeah, you know, it, the breathing issue is certainly one that has to be looked at and can you breathe appropriately. And, right. But anytime you've got a spotter and somebody that's close right. to another person, you know, wearing that mask, as you said, is critical. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's similar to having, you know, these in-person meetings. You know, right now, all of our meetings require uh, us all wearing masks and a mm -hmm. meeting is two people. <laughs> right. So uh, definitely uh, making sure we take all those precautions in place. Right. Yeah. So, you know, just as we close out here, are there any parting thoughts from you guys? Uh, Ted, I'll start with you. Anything you want to share with the fans? I will start with these really awesome blazer masks. Yes. Yeah, there you go. So we all have these, the student athletes and the uh, administration will all be wearing blazer masks. Um, I think it's, you know, it's been a really challenging time period for everybody and everybody's dealt with it differently, but I think there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I know I'm excited to get um, not just the football season started, but all of athletics and just school in general, there's nothing like being on a college campus in the fall. And so I'm excited to see that happen and uh, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. How about you, Jay? 
Uh, I want to echo what Ted said. We're definitely looking forward to getting back to, to campus and seeing all of our students, all of our uh, comrades who, who work at UAB. But at the same time, we do want our fans to know that we miss you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you as we get a chance to visit with you at games and at our hospitality areas. And as we put these plans in place, the biggest thing for us is we're looking forward to seeing you and having you physically support the Blazers in the stadium. So uh, go Blazers. Amen. That's right. <laughs> All right, Stacey, any parting uh, thoughts from you? Yeah, I think for me, it's just, you know, obviously I want to get them back so we can get them prepared um, to, but more importantly that they're able to compete because that's really, you know, the bread and butter of what we do and is getting them ready for that, but getting them ready safely and in, in a, in a safe amount of time. Um, it seems kind of unimportant with all the social issues going on right now, but these kids, they come to college, you know, not only to get an education, but to play a sport that they really love and, um, and to not be able to compete in that for too long is a little wear on them, I'm sure, but I just want to get them back here and get them playing again. Yeah, we definitely do, and, and making sure that uh, they're physically ready and able to achieve all their goals, which is right. playing their best, performing their best, and, and striving for a championship is mm -hmm. obviously very important. You know, I would just say that uh, in addition to everything that you guys have shared, yeah, you know, we need our fans with us and we need them in the stands and, and supporting our teams. And I, I know I speak for everybody in saying how much we appreciate all the people at the hospital and we're at a, at a place like UAB that we're so fortunate to have doctors and nurses uh, that are that are leading uh, the effort and mm -hmm. trying to fight uh, COVID-19 and and looking for a vaccine and looking for treatment and helping all of us and, and every day fighting it and have been for months. So uh, I know that we're all grateful for that and grateful for everybody's hard work. So thanks hey, Mark. for joining me. Yes, Ted, go ahead. My, my dad called me the other day from New York and he was uh, very impressed with how much he's seen from UAB on a national level from the medical side of it. He wasn't aware um, how how much UAB was leading the medical charge in this whole virus. So he, he called and just wanted to let me know that. Yeah, a lot of uh, national attention on UAB around it, that's for sure. And and uh, our scientists uh, have been working hard at, at trying to find a vaccine and, and working on various treatments to keep everybody uh, moving forward. So thanks for saying that. So with all of that, and, uh, and I want to thank my guests for today, and I want to thank all of the, the fans for joining us on this week's edition of Blazer Insider. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Go Blazers. Go Blazers. Go Blazers.